Hi guys, this is a uh, long plane review for a uh, Turbo the Tortoise on the uh, Amstrad CPC. As you can see, it's been released by uh, Codemasters there, but originally it was actually released by High Tech Software, and it was one of their last ever games before going bust. Uh, but Codemasters picked it up and uh, continued to sell the game, thankfully. So we managed to uh, see this nice little loading screen there of Turbo the Tortoise. Now there's a load of guff in the manual about uh, um, scientific experiments gone wrong, um, collecting isotopes from uh, six different time zones, or rare minerals or whatever, depending on the manual of the uh, box you got. But anyway, it's just an excuse to travel through uh, different time zones, and we start off with the prehistoric zone, and basically. Uh, what you gotta do is collect all the objects on the level and then at the end of the level you find an end of level guardian and once you've defeated him you get the object you need to the end of the level and then you move on and there's six different uh, time zones and levels you can't tell which objects are which to be honest with you and they serve no real purpose which you will see at the end of the uh, end of the game when I complete it. So I just ignore what the instructions and the backstory tells you. This is just a fun little simple platformer. And as you can see, guys, it's got some really nice, colourful graphics and sprites there that move nice and smooth and fluidly. We've also got some really smooth scrolling, and this is a fantastic little platformer. And I say little, I mean it's a, it's pretty sort of simple, but it is a budget release. You know, you would have paid one ninety nine or maybe two ninety nine on cassette for this. And uh, it's got little, lots of little hidden things there, like you've got invisible platforms that will allow you to get to uh, high levels or lower levels or whatever. There's also uh, secret bonus areas, and there's one just below. You can see there's like a little dip in the floor there. There we go. Suck down into a bonus stage. We collect all those little green dots. We don't know what they are really, uh, but if you complete all, if you uh, manage to collect all of them, then at the end of the level you get a perfect bonus. And also um, for dis uh, defeating all the uh, enemies as well. So really, the aim of the game is, apart from those birds actually, they can't be destroyed, but anyway, the aim of the game is to defeat all the enemies, collect all the uh, pickups on the level, and that's pretty much it. Ooh, hid hidden lift there, so lots of little secrets and stuff. I mean, this game at the time was kind of trumpeted as being the uh, Amstrad CPC's answer to uh, Mario and Sonic. It's a, uh, well, it's nowhere near that, but uh, nice little try on budget. That little pea pick up there gives me, uh, makes me invulnerable for a short amount of time. And there's a bonus life. You can see you can sort of creep through some walls sometimes. To be honest, the, uh, the secrets and sort of hidden things are, are pretty easy to find and spot. And is the first end of level guardian. He's pretty easy to uh, defeat, like most unfortunately. They've all got the same attack patterns pretty much. Just wait for him to shoot left, shoot right, and then his double fireball attack, and then jump up and smack him in the head. Oh yeah, you do have like a projectile weapon you can sort of fire and shoot. Um, I recommend saving it to the end of level guardian. Quite sure what it is. Is it a rock he's, he's firing? There you go. That was uh, pretty easy stuff. And there's our object we needed to complete the level. As you can see, all the objects, all the enemies killed, perfect bonuses there. And uh, yeah, what I'll be doing is uh, playing this through um, uh, uh, as a perfect run without any uh, um, hit. Uh, I you know, getting uh, hit by an enemy, and uh, we're going to get all the objects, uh, kill all the bad guys, and complete the.
the game in one. Because it's not particularly hard. Ooh. I mean, you do get plenty of lives and sort of energy pickups and stuff throughout the game. It's initially a bit tricky, but I played this a lot as a kid, so I was, I'm pretty good at this. I'm just surprised I haven't uh, got around to doing this game a lot sooner, actually. Now, sound effects are alright, but as you can see, it, it really lacks uh, not having music. Um, it sort of makes the game rather sort of empty and bare and barren at times. Which is a real shame. It would have been nice to have some really sort of cool, funky music to go along with this. I mean, it was absolutely sod all on the uh, title screen, if you remember, just um, just pure text. I'm fine to start the game, no music, no nothing. There's some nice ideas in the game, though, like you can pick up sort of uh, rocks there. And you find that you can throw them when they land on the water, they make sort of uh, platforms and movable lifts. But to be honest, the sort of it, it just feels sort of like like uh, half finished ideas. Could have they could have come up with some really cool sort of uh, I don't know puzzles or uh, hard to reach areas that you just sort of start collecting up objects and uh, building it up and tax it, taxing your uh, brain as to sort of how to reach areas. But no, it's just very very simple stuff. Pick up an object, use it in the next uh, probably in the, uh, just shortly ahead of you. It's all very obvious what you need to do. It's just a shame they didn't utilise sort of things m more. As you'll see in later levels, you can pick up jetpacks. Um, you can jump in a bubble and float around the screen, but for, to not much purpose really. Usually just to access uh, a higher area, which is basically just straight in front of you so it's pretty obvious as levels are quite short but do remember this is uh, this is a uh, budget game released on cassette so it had to fit in 64k of memory so I guess that's why the levels are a little bit short and there's no music because it had to uh, basically work with the stock 464 CPC with only 64k of memory. I suppose they could have done a 6128 version for 128k memory users. It's pretty easy to detect it when the games are loading up, which uh, computer you're using. But never mind. You can't really complain too much if you bought this on budget at. Uh, Two ninety nine, as it would have been, maybe three ninety nine maximum. But I do love the graphics in this. So the graphics are really fantastic. In places, a little bit blocky, but hey, that's the Amstrad for you. Fantastic colour palette being used to full extent. I don't mind the fact too much that it's just the your bog standard sort of time travelling thing in prehistoric zones and ice age zones and stuff which is pretty stock for platformers because it gives a chance to uh, show off some different colours for each levels and what the Amstrad can do graphics wise. There's our next ender level guardian, he is really easy to defeat. The only real, uh, the only guardian that um, is gives any real sense of uh, danger and skill to defeat is basically the uh, final, final guardian on uh, level six. The rest of them are damn easy, like this one. There's a object, some kind of red circular blob. God knows what that is. Okay, load from cassette. So it's sort of half a multi-load game. It loads there, uh, I think it's two levels at a time. So it's not too bad. Right, Egyptian zone, level three. I 
I do love the Amstrad's uh, orange and yellows. And red's very vibrant. I admit I'm really really impressed uh, in, in, in such a like a simple budget game that they've managed to get like really nice smooth scrolling on the Amstrad. Sprites move about really fluidly with like lots of frames of animation. Well maybe maybe a few per sprite but it does the job really well. And uh, t uh, Turbo the Tortoise himself, he controls really well. Controls are really responsive. You know, there's no lag at all, and that's really important in you know platform games like this, where precision is required and quick, uh, quick reflexes and stuff. Perhaps my only gripe is you have to use the up key to jump, and uh, you can't hold the up key uh, down continuously uh, for him to keep jumping and jumping. You have to press up again to jump. So be prepared to if you need to make a quick jump after another one. You'd have to press the up key again. A little bit of a gripe. That's only very minor. Yeah, some of these guys take about two hits to get rid of. There's some enemies that you can't kill. It's due to like, the uh, birds and, uh, that will appear on the next few levels. I'm not sure there's any on this level. Those things uh, thinks is that uh, shoot fireballs that you hear you can't kill. Like that in the bottom right there, just avoid their fire and time it well. Oh, that was a close one. There'll be a hidden uh, invisible platform there somewhere. There we go. Comparing to the other versions, this was released on the uh, Speccy and Commodore 64. Um, obviously, the Speccy version is uh, most limited to the Amstrad version. And as uh, as, as is usually the case, um, the Speccy version just plays a smidgen, just a touch faster and smoother, but only by a very small amount. Um, but has you know basically. Not monochrome graphics, I think it uses about three or four colours in the game. Slightly more detailed, but uh, oh, and it has parallax scrolling sort of half implemented as well. Um, but yeah, the Amstrad version has these nice full colour graphics, looks gorgeous. Commodore 64 version, I've not played it, I've not seen it in action. Um, as far as I know, there, uh, there isn't any videos of it on YouTube for me to have a look at as well. A um, bit of a shame that. I don't think it rated highly at the time, by the looks of it, on the review sites I've seen. I think that too might have had parallax scrolling. Uh, but uh, probably played really smooth and nice, but uh, not as nice as graphics as the Amstrad version, I would probably guess. But when you see the Commodore 64 had the uh, had games like Mon uh, Mayhem in Monsterland, isn't it? Uh, which is really excellent. That sort of put this to shame quite a bit. I would have thought. The yeah, Amstrad sure I had a Prehistoric 2 coming out as well. But this isn't a full price game. As I said many times, it's a budget game, so you can't expect too much. It's going to be pretty bare bones and simple. But what it does, it does it well. Right, is uh, an Egyptian mummy, end of level guardian, as as I'm sure you would have guessed what would have happened. It's pretty predictable. He moves across, of course, and uh, jumps up from uh, where your location is. So you just need to. Uh, lure him up and jump out the way and shoot. Picking up that block and dropping it there makes things a little bit easier. Just only need a couple more hits. 
bits, I would have thought. This was uh, made a few years earlier. Um, it would have made a really good full price game with a bit more sort of time and attention uh, to have longer levels with more depth to them, maybe more challenging end of level guardians. I can have like a decent backstory and plot as to what's going on in the game, and uh, but more importantly, some like you know music in the ga in the game. Certainly, but there's some really good ideas that, like you see, although I picked up a spring and I can move the spring and then jump um, and use the spring to jump to higher levels, but it all feels, uh, as I said before, rather sort of half Im implemented. Some really sort of clever, I don't know, puzzles could have been solved using using that, but it doesn't really go that far, which is a shame. Would have been nice to see some sequels to this game and uh, expanded further, maybe then. But alas, this was like 1992, coming on to 1993, the end of the commercial life of the uh, home 8 bit systems. But you know, towards the end of the uh, 80s and early 90s, High Tech, who originally made and released this game before Game Bust, um, they, did, they, they managed to get out some really quality games actually usually sort of like a cutesy cartoon licenses now um, who's the programmer of this game uh, Dave Thompson yeah he did so, he, yeah he did some really good games actually for high tech um, I remember he did I think it's Pottsworth and Co that was really good uh, Yogi's Great Escape and uh, Top Cat things like that. Uh, I think he did a Scooby-Doo game for them as well. I'm not sure what else. Uh, he did a game called Future Bike Simulator. Just looking at the screenshots of that now. That looks that looks interesting. I might have to try that um, later. And uh, sort of looks like a Commando Ikari Warriors clone called Blazing Thunder. Hmm. All look pretty good and interesting games with nice graphics. Actually, High Tech were known for having uh, nice graphics in a latter, latter era of their career and existence. And all those games are mentioned there that High Tech released in this guide Dave programmed. Uh, I remember, I think nearly all of them had lovely smooth scrolling. Often, something you know that's uh, criticised about the Amstrad, it sort of suffered from being able to scroll the screen smoothly but this is pretty good 
I wouldn't say it's pixel scrolling, but uh, it's probably probably scrolling maybe two pixels at a time. That's nice and smooth. And probably looks even better on a sort of real Amstrad CPC monitor and stuff, or a TV rather than emulated. Okay, I think there we go. He's a swine to start with because he fires off a couple of those axes. He's easy to get caught out and lose some energy. But the rest of it though, just uh, he just keep up down there. And uh, just jump up and smack him in the head. Yeah, easy stuff. Yeah, not exactly exciting watching this guy, sorry. But it's a pretty short game. We've pretty much just not got much over 10 minutes left of the gameplay footage. Yep, and there we go. Some round blue circle thing this time to uh, collect. Level 5, what's this one? I think it's a future zone or something, I think. Or present day. 20th century zone, so present, well. It's a shame they didn't do the uh, parallax scrolling like the Spectrum version did. I'm sure they could have done it, it looks uh Looks really would have, would have looked really cool. Oh well, you can't have everything. But yes, yeah, it's probably uh, probably one of the better platform games for the Amstrad. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Titus the Fox. That was a really good platformer from the Amstrad. Had some really lovely graphics as well, um, but suffered for some from some really sort of uh, messy scrolling at times. Whereas this is where this is like really nice and smooth. But the levels are much bigger in Titus the Fox. And lots more to do in the game. In fact, that's probably due a long plane review for me, Tyus of Fox. Anyway, back to the Turbo the Tortoise. What did Amstrad Action give the game at the time? I think they gave it in the 80% range. Let me have a look. Oh, they gave it 88% overall. That's a pretty good score. <coughs> it's definitely not a 90% master game. I think maybe 88% might be a little bit generous, but you have to weigh up that well it is on budget only a couple of quid, so but I think Amstrad, Amstrad Action did make quite a bit of a fuss of the game at the time, as they tended to do in the sort of the latter end of days before the magazine folded. Really overplayed a lot of stuff and made a fuss over things like this saying it was like the answer to uh, Mario and Sonic on the Amstrad well it clearly isn't but still really nice this level isn't too hard actually just watch out for those birds at the top of the screen you just need to duck and uh, just just duck under them. You can't kill the dogs though, so don't try and uh, shoot them and waste uh, waste uh, ammo on them. And certainly don't try and jump on their heads. So I guess I'll sum up a, a review. 
seems we're nearing the end of this level and coming on to the final one. I'll kind of, I'll, I will kind of agree with Amsterdam Action. They gave it 88%. I think, um, I think I'm going to give this uh, eight and a half out of ten. It's a cool little platformer, simple stuff, very, very well done with lovely graphics, well implemented, tight, responsive controls, smooth scrolling. Um, lot really nice sprites that move fluidly around the screen. Can't really complain too much for a few quid. So yeah, this gets a, an eight and a half out of ten for me. And yeah, and obviously I've already mentioned, could have done with music, better than level, better end of level guardians like uh, this guy is pretty much pointless. Just stay ducked and rooted there and wait for him to pop up in the middle and uh, shoot him in the head. There's absolutely no real challenge at all from him. And the uh, levels perhaps could have done with a bit more depth. I'm beginning to repeat myself now, but that kind of sums up a bit of a review. So, 8.5 out of 10. Good for a quick blast, definitely. Well worth checking out, guys. I think he just needs a couple more hits. And then we're on to the uh, final level. Oh, this surely must be it. Cool. Oh, it looks like a diamond we're picking up now this time. Okay, awesome. Perfect again. Nice. And now it's the final level time, Fut in the uh, future zone. So yeah, we have a time traveling mutant turtle. Nice. And it's time we're fighting against robots and stuff. Watch out for conveyor belts that are all, uh, only move in one direction. As you can see there, you can press the opposite direction, sort of stay still and be able to judge uh, before you get crushed into those things. Invisible platform there. Oh that J symbol there. This gives a turbo the tortoise a jetpack briefly. Hey and there he goes. Ah cool. But it's any use for a short amount of time there just to get to that area there to get an extra life. Like I said would have been nice to have bigger levels but made use of these objects and stuff and pickups. But ah well. Jump over those uh, vents there. Now you just have to wait. Take your time in these uh, in these levels. There's no time limit, so you don't need to rush through the game. But if you want to, old Turbo there, we can move pretty quickly and nimbly. So, another jetpack there to pick up. Now watch out for these. They'll go down but come up pretty quickly. Just watch the sequence and then move like there. need to get that jetpack because it will allow me to get to the uh, hidden bonus area which is on the top of that barrel there believe it or not Whee, there he goes and onto the bonus stage which is basically just as before more items to pick up Beyond, uh, I think I mentioned Titus the Fox earlier, that was quite a good platformer. I kind of struggle to think of other really, really good platformers on the Amstrad, to be honest. Certainly in the uh, pure platforming mould of this uh, type of game. You know, a cutesy uh, character like a Turbo the Tortoise, or Titus the Fox, or Sonic Mario. I kind of struggle.
struggle to think really. Uh, well, uh, if you remember, we had Fluff. I did a video, a video for Fluff on the uh, Plus Machines uh, at the end of last year. And that was pretty good stuff. It was Fluff. That rhymes. <laughs> um, uh, Rainbow Islands, that was pretty good. Actually, that was damn good, actually, Rainbow Islands. Um, New Zealand Story, less so. Rodland, far too slow. Blech. But anyway, I'm going to shut up about other platformers because uh, I'm probably missing out some really, really good examples. There must be tons of platform games for the Amstrad. I must be just a bit tired and not thinking of them. Anyway, this is a bit of a tricky section here, but we're coming up to the uh, final boss. He's, he's not far away. Watch out for his gun at the top here. Because he will fire his bullets just as you need to jump through that uh, gap. Alright, ah, okay. We're alright this time. Uh, that's an energy pickup. Don't really need it. I've got full energy, but just for the sake of completion. There we go. Mine's slime. And yeah, this is where the this is where the final boss is. So I'm just itching for just in case he appears and right in front of me. Sometimes happens. No, it's all right. There we go. Now he's he's quite a tough boss actually. He's the first boss that's really taxing. Obviously, obviously, is a pretty uh, predictable and similar attack pattern. But he's quite hard to avoid sometimes. So you need to get up on the top of those platforms. So you can manage to get enough height to jump over him. Once you're over, remember to duck, avoid his uh, weapon there, and then jump and shoot him in the head. Now you want to kind of jump over him um, on his first or second jump, just to give you enough breathing space to move away, like like there. Probably jump as he jumps. Because if you jump over him just before he starts his first or second jump, he will actually follow you, um, you'll, and you'll en he'll end up crashing into you, and uh, you'll lose energy. He was quite a tough cookie actually until I worked out how to beat him. Not sure who or what he's meant to be. A giant dude wearing stupid sunglasses with a stupid haircut. No idea what he, what relation he has to the, uh, the story. There you go. He's a final boss, and it should be. There you go. That's it. Last it. He's dead. And uh, we've completed Turbo the Tortoise. There you go. So what awaits us guys as our reward? Let's uh, let's take a look. Da -da -da. Yeah, just a screen of some text going, well done, you've completed Turbo the Tortoise. Uh, oh well. Could have put a bit more effort in there guys, but you know, like I said, I'm not gonna complain too much. This is a budget release for a couple of quid. So uh, yeah, pretty good stuff overall. Eight and a half out of ten, and uh, of course the game here just loops around to the start of the uh, first level. Everything's reset. But anyway, we'll end this here. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.